differential calculus. Calculus is one of the central branches of mathematics and was developed from algebra and geometry. It of course is built on, on the concept of limits and in this particular video the focus is going to be on gradient between two points because once we have a good understanding of gradient between two points then we can proceed to gradient at one point. So let's see what is next. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and give me a huge like. Right, let's first look at average gradient. The average gradient or average rate of change of a function f between the points x and a, sorry, between x equals to a and x equals to b, is defined to be the gradient of the line joining the points on the graph of the function. We say that the average gradient of f over the interval a and b is the gradient of the line a, b. So if you have a look at the drawing itself, the sketch, you will see where is A and where is B. So the, the first small letter A is the first X value and the second letter B is the second X value. So therefore the gradient between the points A and B will be the average gradient. Let's look at, the, let's look at our first example. Find the average gradient of the graph of the f of x equals to x squared minus 4, which of course is a parabola, between the points x minus 1 and x3. x minus 1 or negative 1 and x3. So, the average gradient of f between negative 1 and 3 is the gradient of the line AB, which joins these two points on the graph. We need to determine the y coordinates of the corresponding to the given x values then it will be easy to determine the gradient of the line segment ab this gradient will be the average gradient of the parabola between the given x values so step number one is to substitute x equals to negative one into the function and then you get a negative three and there was our oh, point a is a negative one and negative three do the same with the other x value three substitute and then you get a 5. So point B will be 3 and 5. Then we're going to use the formula we've learned in analytical geometry to find gradient between two points, which is normally change in Y over change in X. So be careful now. Change in Y over change in X, which is 5 minus a negative 3 over 3 minus a negative 1. Remember, you are allowed to switch them. That gives you 8 over 4, so therefore 2. And please look at the direction of AB. It is in a positive direction, so therefore I am happy with my positive 2. So the average gradient between A and B is therefore 2. Let's look at the next example. Find the average rate of change, which of course is gradient, don't forget now. E, when the g of x is negative x cubed and the interval is negative 1 to 4. So again, like previously, substitute a negative 1 into the function. Be careful with the substitution. There's a negative in front of x cubed. Rather, use your calculator. If you're unsure, make sure how it is done. And it, therefore, it ends up as positive 1. Be careful now. And the same with a 4. If you put a 4 in, you get a negative 64. Be careful, students. This is where we normally make silly, unforced errors. Now, so the average rate of change, or we also call it gradient of the graph, between my negative 1 and 4 is given by the points A, which now is negative 1 and 1, B, which is 4 and negative 64. Then again, use your gradient formula. Be careful now with those negatives, and you get a negative 13. So a general formula for average gradient, right? So there you are. Okay, cool. So if you look at a general formula for average gradient, then look at the sketch below and you will notice that point A's x value is x and point B's x value is x plus h. So that means the distance between x and x plus h 
is H. So we're going to use this in the next slide to discuss this. Right, so let's use uh, this uh, sketch of the previous slide. And there you see I've repeated the drawing. So now we can use this to design a formula. So we still use the gradient formula we've learned in um, analytical geometry. And now just remember that the y value of b is now x plus h. Don't forget now. And the y value of a is still, is still the f of x. So don't forget now. Remember, the change in y is when you substitute x into the equation. So don't forget, it explains why I have the f of x plus h minus the f of x. Then at the denominator, the x of b is the bigger value, which is x plus h, and the x of a is the smaller one, which is x. Remember, we still subtract, and therefore we end up with the f of x plus h minus the f of x, over h. This is a very important formula because we're going to use this later on when we do derivatives by first principles. Please make sure that you understand exactly how that happened. Let's do our first example. Consider the function, the f of x equals to 1 minus x squared. You must determine the f of 2 plus h minus the f of 2 over h. Now you must remember now that 2 is of course your smaller x value. So don't forget now that 2 is your smaller x value and 2 plus h is your bigger. So don't forget now because there you'll get a little bit confused. So what you do is then you substitute into your function and you end up with the value for f of 2 plus h. Remember, you replace each time x with 2 plus h. Remove the brackets, do your substitution, and then you end up with negative 4, negative h. And there you are, because the f of 2 will give you a negative 3. Don't forget now, it's how you get your two values. So this answer represents the average gradient of the f of x of y minus x squared between the points x2 and x2 plus h. Please go carefully through the example and make sure you understood exactly what happened. Right, let's look at the next example. Given the f of x is negative x squared plus 7, find the average gradient between x negative 1 and x3. So again, remember now, x negative 1 is now the smaller x value because it's to the left. And x plus 3 is the bigger x value. So don't forget now. So therefore, average gradient is the f of 3 minus the f of negative 1. So remember now, substitute that into the equation. And in the denominator, 3 minus a negative 1. Remember, you always subtract the smaller x value from the bigger one that you must never forget. Then get rid of your brackets. Be careful when you get rid of the brackets. Be careful with those negatives. Please use your calculator here, and then you get the answer, negative 2. So in the B part is now the parabola. So you sketch the parabola, which is a parabola that frowns. It means a sad face. That means a maximum turning point. And then you can see where the uh, tangent lies. It is in a north uh, westerly direction because it is a negative gradient. Then, of course, you also work out the turning point using your knowledge of the parabola. So, this is just a graphical representation of your gradient. Right, so here I have uh, four examples which I want you to have a look at. Please try and solve them, go carefully through them. Please make sure that you can do each and every one of them, because that will be good practice for you. I thank you for watching this video. Uh, this is Ahmed Suleiman signing off. Please, again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give me a huge like. Speak to you in the next video.